In today's video, I'm gonna share six things that I got rid of or stopped doing to level up myself and my life. And while all of these things are personal to me, they probably will change your life too. Hey friends, welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Jills and I help women step into their power, tap into their divine feminine and become their best self. So if that's something you wanna do, you should subscribe and stick around. So the first thing that I got rid of to level up, and I have to mention this first because it is so important. I had to get rid of my old identity. I had to get rid of the way that I used to see myself. I could not step into that next level version of myself all while still thinking the same thoughts I've always had, having the same limiting beliefs I've always had, showing up the same way I've always had, and most importantly, seeing myself the same way I always had. I had to start seeing myself differently and identifying as someone different. I had to move on and evolve. I had to shift how I saw myself. I thought, you know, like, who is that next level version of me? What is she like? And I realized that I had to embody that person now and see myself as her now. If I wanted to become her, I had had to start feeling like her. I had to start seeing myself as her. The only way that I was gonna create the life I wanted was by shedding my old identity and stepping into a new one. Cause here's the thing, when you level up, it will require you to let go of certain aspects of yourself. Not everything, you're still the same person at your core, but you will have to let go of certain aspects of yourself. I could not become level 10 Jills while still living, thinking, seeing myself as level five Jills. I had to let go of the old stories I used to tell tell myself that no one cared about what I had to say, that I would always just be that girl in the background, always the supporting character, that I had to play it safe, that I wasn't capable of doing big things. Stories like that used to rule my life because they shaped the way I saw myself. And when I saw myself as those things, guess what kind of life I lived? That kind of life. In order to break free from that and become level 10 Jills, I could not, I literally could not keep thinking the same things. I could not keep seeing myself in the same way. I realized that if I kept the same identity of who I was, nothing would ever change. I had to decide that that was no longer me because if level 10 Jills wasn't those things, then I was no longer those things. And as I went through this process, I realized just how malleable our identity is. You know, a lot of people think that you just pop out of the womb and that's who you are and nothing ever changes and that's not true. Our identity can easily be shifted, good or bad. For example, you had two really bad public speaking experiences in high school and then all of a sudden you start identifying as someone who's just really bad at public speaking. It's just who you are and that's who you start to see yourself as for the rest of your life. Or maybe you've always seen yourself as not very capable, not very powerful, but then you start this new job and your boss is awesome. She is the best. And she always tells you over and over again how much of a rock star you are, like all the time. And it might feel weird at first, but the more and more she says it, the more you're like, wait, am I? Am I a rock star? And then eventually when she ingrains that in you long enough, you will just eventually start seeing yourself as that person and you'll start showing up as that rock star, more confident, more capable because that identity just starts to stick. What I'm saying is that your identity is not set in stone. It's always shifting and adjusting a bit as we go about life. But so you need to ask yourself, does your current identity support the life you're trying to create? Is your current identity leveling you up or holding you back? For me, it was holding me back. Our identity creates our reality. Whoever you think you are, you will become eventually. Whoever you think you are, you will show up as. And that is the life that you will create for yourself. Now, I wanna be clear. This isn't just about hating yourself and hating who you are naturally, hating the core of your being and wanting to become someone completely different. I want you to think about it this way. There are numerous different potential realities and timelines out there. And there are numerous different potential versions of you. Which one do you wanna show up as? Which one do you wanna be? It's not about becoming something you're not, it's about unbecoming and letting go of everything that's holding you back, everything that's keeping you from embodying your highest self. For me, I had to let some parts of me go. I had to let go of the way that I saw myself because the way that I saw myself came from a wounded place. And I would argue that who I am now is much more authentically me than who I was six years ago. And that's the thing, when you embody your highest self, when you become that next level version of yourself, you're not stepping into somebody you're not. You're stepping into a more authentic version of you. 
a higher vibration version of you. If you want to dive into this topic of shifting your identity, I have a whole video on it up here, but the point I want to bring home is that I could not become the person I am today while still seeing myself as the person I was before. My old identity put a limit or a cap on how high I could go, how good my life could get. And if I wanted to reach higher, I had no other choice but to shed my old identity. I had to start seeing myself differently. Now, the next thing I got rid of to level up my life was trading time for money. When you make money only by trading your hours, you can only make so much money because there's only so much time in the day. Like for example, if you work an hourly rate of $20 an hour and you work 40 hours a week, then you'll make $800 a week. And if you wanna make more than that, then you have to work more. You know, you have to work 60 hours a week, 80 hours a week, or you have to figure out how to increase your hourly rate, which there's still usually a cap on. In a salaried role, you're guaranteed to make X amount of money every year, as long as you show up every day and work. And that can offer great stability for sure. But again, you're capped. And even if you work more, you work overtime, you don't get paid anymore. And then you just kind of pray at the end of the year that you're gonna get a raise. Versus think about Apple and their iPhones, right? Like obviously Apple is a huge mega company, but there's basically no cap to how much money they can make because they can always just sell more product. They're not trading their time for money, they're trading value, this value for money. Once I stopped trading my time directly for money and started producing income on my own, I feel like it helped level up my life. I feel like it helped me get my life back because it gave me the freedom that I was craving and it also helped me make more money all while doing something that I loved. And that's the cool thing is one month I can make a certain amount of income and the next month I could double it all while basically working the same amount of time because there is no cap. When I realized when I was working my corporate job a long while ago now, how much I disliked having to be somewhere Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. I personally just don't do well physically living that sort of lifestyle. I knew something had to change. I knew that if I wanted to make money in the long term, I needed to do it differently because that kind of life was gonna destroy me. Now, I'm not saying that that option is bad for everyone. It's not. But for me, it felt limiting because I started to feel so drained. I started to feel like a slave to a job. I started to question like, maybe there's a better way to do it. Something that felt more natural to me and ideally something that felt easier, honestly. And I shifted my thinking from how can I trade my time for money to how can I trade value for money? How can I provide value? How can I be an owner in the money-making process instead of an employee? How can I work smarter, not harder? Obviously this isn't something that just happens overnight, but this has given me so much freedom, so much flexibility, more income, all while doing something that feels so totally aligned and truly makes me happy. Instead of giving my time, I am now giving value, right? I'm giving expertise, knowledge, that has no cap. If you'd like a whole video on how to build a business all while kind of staying in your feminine energy and having those soft life vibes, because that's what I'm about, let me know. I can do that in the future. This might not be the right choice for everyone, but if you have been considering starting a business or a side hustle or taking more ownership over your income, especially if you're interested in building a more creative business like mine, then you may want to check out Skillshare, who's kind of sponsoring this video. Skillshare is the largest online community for creatives and is one of my favorite platforms. They have thousands of different classes, like so many different learning topics to explore, all led by industry pros in things like illustration, design, productivity, film, freelancing, and a whole lot more. Something that I love about Skillshare is that they have something that they call learning pass, and they're basically hand-picked curated classes that are meant to be taken in order to master a certain skill. The classes basically build off of one another and reinforce the things that you've learned to help you really build that competency. Right now, I'm taking the learning path, creative productivity, kickstart and sustain any project. It's all about creativity, overcoming that creative anxiety that can sometimes hold you back, sparking new ideas, and then turning those ideas into something real and taking action. You know, for me, my business is a more creative business, but that's not something that's just always come naturally to me. You know, creativity was not something that was fostered in me growing up. And after college, when I worked my corporate job, 
I worked in finance and accounting. I worked in like financial processes. So reconnecting to this part of myself has been a journey. It's been something that I've had to work on and it's still definitely a work in progress, but I'm very much enjoying that learning path. Skillshare gives you the perfect opportunity to invest in yourself, learn new skills and take your career or your side hustle to the next level or to just learn new awesome things to enhance your life. If you're one of the first 500 people to use my link below, you'll get a one month free trial of Skillshare, which is such a steal. Um, I love Skillshare and my husband uses it as well. I told my husband this morning that I'd really like if he could take like learn how to take better pictures of me and he immediately looked on Skillshare for photography classes. <laughs> so I think he's gonna do that. So you get a whole month free, it would be silly not to try it and take advantage of it. So thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and let's get back into it. Okay, now moving on, the third thing I got rid of was alcohol. Because here's the thing for me, alcohol just doesn't make me feel that good. <laughs> and I've never really been that big of a drinker. Like even in college, I didn't really drink that much and I wouldn't call myself sober because I think of it differently. I just don't really care for it. And also I do drink probably like once a year, but I keep it really light and it's basically like one drink max. Now I'm not saying that everyone should do this to level up because I do think that we are all unique and different. We're all sensitive to different things. But for me, I just feel like alcohol and me don't really mesh very well. And drinking alcohol consistently makes me feel like a very blah version of myself. Like when I drink consistently, I feel like I'm not fully living life. Kind of like I'm held back. If I do drink, it's always like clear liquids for me, like tequila or vodka, cause that just tends to work better with my body. But I just kind of don't really drink. Like all my friends, all my family just know that I don't really ever drink. To level up my life, I had to think about what was limiting me and my identity, like I talked about, that was a big one. But then also just like a super practical one was alcohol. When I was in my early twenties, even though alcohol didn't make me feel great, I still kept drinking it because that's just what my friends did. And they all seemed like they were having a great time. And so I just kept trying and then I just kept it as a part of my life, never drinking alone at home. It was always just at social functions until eventually I was just like, you know what? No, I'm done. I'm moving on. I don't care for this. Again, I still drink like once a year or something like that and I keep it limited and I have a good time doing it, but that's it. I don't like it to be a real part of my life. It just doesn't resonate with me. You might feel fine when you're drinking alcohol in moderation, but you might feel absolutely terrible when you eat cheese or something. You have to be honest about anything and everything that isn't making you feel your best. Everything that's limiting you and holding you back from feeling like your best self. Foods, liquids, supplements, content, music, movies, anything. You know it. You can feel it in your body physically and energetically when you are being limited, when you are being pushed to a lower state. I personally feel like alcohol limits me when I consume it regularly, but we're all different though. We're not all going to have the same things holding us back. But the longer that you ignore yours and pretend that it doesn't exist, the longer that you ignore the fact that watching your true crime documentaries right before bed is giving you the worst sleep ever, right? The longer you'll be held back. If you listen to how things feel in your body, you'll know. You'll know how to improve things. You'll know how to start leveling up your life. The next thing I got rid of was asking for too much feedback or advice. Because again, remember, I didn't feel very confident or capable. And I got into this habit of asking people all the time, what did they think? What were their thoughts? From the little things like how I should style my hair to the bigger things like what should I do with my life? I realized in that identity shifting process and that to level up, I had to start making my own decisions. I had to start having my own thoughts and not care so much about what other people thought about those thoughts. I had to start standing on my own two feet. There's a time and a place for getting feedback and advice. It can definitely be super helpful, especially when you're getting advice from someone who's already done what you want to do. But when I was asking people too much for things like feedback and advice, what I was doing was I was taking away my power. I was ignoring my inner knowing, my inner guide. I leveled up my life by instead of looking to other people for answers, I began to look to myself and this changed everything for me. Deep down, we know 
we know things. We know what's right for us and we know what's not. And you might think that you don't, but you do. And the more you become connected to yourself and your body and the way you feel, the more straightforward this becomes. I can feel it in my body when things are good for me and when I'm moving in the right direction. And I can feel it when things are bad for me. Truth is I've always been able to feel it even since I was a kid, I just didn't realize it. And even when I did realize it, I wasn't confident enough to trust it. When I'm doing something that's not right for me, my body starts to feel heavy and tight and constricted and almost starts to feel like energetically trapped. That's kind of the best way to describe it. It feels uncomfortable and the opposite of expansive. And for really big, important things, this feeling might be really strong, like you can't miss it. But for more smaller, you know, less important things, this feeling might be a little bit more subtle where it's really only noticeable if you try to listen. When I'm doing something right for me, it might still make me feel a little bit uncomfortable, but that discomfort feels more like butterflies. There may still be some nervousness there, especially if I'm doing something new, but there's usually a deeper calm and contentment that's underneath it. Think about the difference in your body when you're imagining these two different scenarios, okay? I want you to feel the difference. So one, you're about to walk down the aisle and marry someone who is absolutely terrible. He doesn't support you and he's not very nice to you, but for some weird reason, your parents like him, you don't know why. And then two, you just started a new company that is so soul-filled and aligned. You've been dreaming about doing this for so long, but you have to give this big presentation in front of a lot of people. It's really important. You've never done anything like this before and it starts in 30 minutes and you are scared. The first one feels more like dread, restriction, tightness. Almost like if you imagine your aura around you, it starts to get smaller and a little bit wacko. Maybe it's getting a little bit darker. You feel like your body is telling you no. The second one still feels scary. You're so nervous you might vomit. It's uncomfortable, but it's different. There's also this feeling of yes. There's also this feeling of being energetically pulled in that direction. Like even though there's discomfort, it also feels expansive and like your aura is getting stronger, bigger, brighter. What I have realized in life is that life becomes so much easier and so much better when you start to tap into your body and your intuition and when you start making your own decisions. Women are so naturally good at this once they are confident enough to tap in and trust it. It's like life becomes way more straightforward because you can start to feel your way through. Your life will majorly level up when you start tapping in and trusting your own decisions. Alignment is the secret to truly leveling up yourself and your life. And only you will ever know what is aligned. No one else can tell you that. Next thing I stopped doing, and this is oddly specific and kind of tiny, but I stopped dressing casual for date night. And I started looking more put together, more glamorous, more elevated, and just had more fun with it. I started putting on like more banger outfits. You know, the kind where like you walk down the stairs, tell him you're ready and he looks at you and he's like, whoa. I stopped saving my more elegant, glamorous outfits for a special night that would never really happen anyways, and started creating my own special nights. Life is what you make of it, right? You know, the city where I live, it tends to be a more casual city. Like people dress pretty casually and that's fine. But sometimes I'm not gonna lie, that bores me. And just because they're wearing whatever they want to wear, it doesn't mean that I have to fit in and wear exactly the same thing as them. I just realized that life is way more fun when you turn it up a notch and get glam sometimes. Now, I'm not someone who dresses glamorous every single day because that's also not me, but it's fun and exciting to turn up the notch a little bit for date night. And it's funny because half the time when I come down and Cole sees what I'm wearing, sometimes he will run up to the closet and put on a nicer pair of shoes or put on a nicer jacket so that he can look better too. Again, this is a smaller one, but I love clothes and I love fashion and I love getting dressed up every once in a while. And if I don't have some fancy glamorous occasion to wear things to, which is most of the time I don't have those things, then I just create the occasion. Date night becomes the occasion. And it makes those little moments even more special. I recommend it. It keeps things interesting. Now, the last thing I did to level up my life was that I stopped being a baby and took some risks. I stopped letting fear control me. All of the big risks that I took, the ones that I was so scared of and thought about for so long because I didn't wanna make the wrong decision. Every single one of them has leveled me up and improved my life. Quitting my corporate job, I was scared to do that, terrified. Starting a YouTube channel, moving across the country where I didn't know one single person, investing in myself financially in many ways. All of these things I was so scared to do, but I did it anyways. And even though it felt 
felt uncomfortable, I knew in my gut it was the right direction. And every single one has paid off and put me in a better place than I was before. Some risks that I took, it was like Cole and my two best friends supporting me and like that was it. A lot of my family thought the things that I was doing was stupid. And I have a funny story, right after I quit my job, my stable good job, it was a holiday either like Thanksgiving or Christmas. And the thing about me is that once I make a decision, I am very like confident and steadfast in that. And it takes me a while to decide, but once I do, I am all in. And so it was a holiday, it was like a family function and we were all together. And so I was telling people that I quit my job and I quit the whole industry that I was in. And one of my close family members was telling everyone like, oh no, she didn't quit, she's gonna go back, it's just temporary. Like they were uncomfortable and almost embarrassed by my decision. I really didn't have a lot of people in my corner, but I did know that the direction I was headed in before was not right and that it needed to change. And my goodness, am I so freaking glad that I listened to that. When you feel like your life isn't going in the direction you want, Sometimes you just have to take the risk, close your eyes and jump in whatever direction feels like the best one and just know that you'll figure it out along the way. You have to consider that if you are feeling a pull towards something, there's probably a reason. There's this quote, fortune favors the bold, which is basically another way to say that luck favors those who take action. Someone's dream life is hardly ever created without taking a little bit of risk. You can't let fear stop you from stepping into that. And I get it, I was a very fearful person, but I didn't want that anymore. I didn't want it to be a part of my identity. I knew that it was limiting me. So I just decided to get more comfortable with those uncomfortable moments. I chose to see them as fun and exciting instead of terrifying. Taking risks is not about being reckless and impulsive. It's about being thoughtful and calculated but then just going for it. And if that risk didn't turn out the exact way that you wanted to, it almost always leads you to something else. That's usually better, but you would never be able to see that something else without taking that first step. And when you do take those risks, it's like telling the universe that you're ready, that you're ready for what you want, that you're taking it seriously and that you're creating an opportunity for that abundance to come into your life. It's like telling the universe or God that you're ready to step into that next level. That is it. I hope you got value from this video and that you are able to learn from my experiences. Now, if you want to level up, like I said, you have to level up the way you see yourself. So I highly recommend you go check out this video if you haven't seen it already, all about shifting your identity and reinventing yourself. I think you'll really enjoy that one. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you over there or I'll just catch you next time. Bye.